uh, hypothesize that there's a specific difference between uh, the two population means. Uh, for example, one is 10% more than the other, or one is 8% less than the other, so on and so forth. So there's an infinite number of null positions that we could actually test for. Now, the I suppose the standard error of the mean uh, is equal to the square root of the pooled variance over n1. The pooled variance is 12, so it's 12 divided by the first sample size, which is 12. Okay, uh, plus the second pooled variance, uh, which is 12 divided by 14, and it's the square root of this. Okay, so it's the square root of that. Okay, and if I do this on the calculator, the t becomes Okay, so we have our 35 minus our 46 gives us a minus 11. So that's minus 11 to be divided by the square root. Okay, so I'm going to calculate the square root. Well, this is 1, so it's going to be the square root of 1 plus 12 divided by 14. Okay, that gives us a value of uh, 1.36. So let's just say that's 1.36. So my test statistic is 11 divided by 1.36. Don't forget the negative sign. So it's equal to 8, 8 point, it's about 8.1, okay? What we're really saying is this, is that the two samples, yeah, okay? okay? The two samples, uh, seem to be a distance of 8.1 standard deviations away, okay? Or the difference between the difference between the two samples and our hypothesized difference between our populations is 8.1 standard deviations, yeah? Or 8.1 standard units would be probably more important. Okay? Another question is, is this far enough away from the hypothesized uh, difference, yeah? Okay? Is this far enough away to be significant? So what we need to do is step four is to identify our critical values. The critical values in this particular case are critical values or critical regions. Uh, this is a t-test, so it's a t-distribution. The t-distribution is hypothesized to be centered on zero. It's a two-tailed test, so we have two tails. Uh, we have two critical values, C1 and C2. Let's say C1 and C2. It's symmetrical, so once you calculate one, you have the other. And the question is, is 8.1 far enough out into this critical region, yeah, okay, to be sufficiently different, okay, uh, from, from uh, to be sufficiently far enough away from zero so that we can, ha that we can actually uh, assume that the two populations have different population means, okay? So to figure out these particular critical values, uh, what we need to do is we need to go to our t distribution tables. The degrees of freedom in this case, our t distribution tables are going to be so for our t distribution tables, our t dist tables. Okay, uh, we have the area in the right hand tail. In our case, it's alpha over two, so it's alpha over two in here, and it's alpha over two in here, which is zero point zero two five. So we're looking at zero point zero two five, and our degrees of freedom. Well, the degrees of freedom are defined to be, degrees of freedom is equal to n1 plus n2 minus 2. Uh, I suppose our degrees of freedom is equal to 17, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to come down our degrees of freedom column to 17, triangulate in, and this will be the critical value that has 0 0.025 of the area to its right-hand side. Okay, so I'm going to go to the tables now, the t tables, the t distribution tables. Uh, I'm looking for the column labeled 0 0.025. In my tables here, that's the third column. My degrees of freedom is 17. So I triangulate down to 17 and I get a, a critical value of 2.110. So I get 2.110. Okay, that's the hard work done now. So what we know is that this critical value here is 2.110. And through symmetry, this critical value here is minus 2.1110, okay? The question that we have is, is the test statistic bigger than these two, either of these particular two demarcation points? Now, clearly we can see that our test statistic is in this area over here, t is equal to 8.1, okay? So, the test statistic falls into the rejection region. Or really what we're saying is this. If the null hypothesis is true, okay, the probability of us observing a test statistic as extreme as the one that we've observed is very, very small. Okay? Which means that if the null hypothesis is false and the alternative is true, 
that the probability of observing that test statistic will be quite large. Okay, so it's falling in our rejection region, so we reject, we reject H zero in favour of H A. But let's write that down. Step five, our decision, and our decision is going to be clearly, clearly. Now, sorry, this should be a negative t value here, minus. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. We'll just get the absolute values of them, yeah. Throw away our signs, yeah. So clearly, uh, the absolute value of our t is bigger than the absolute value of our critical value. What we mean by that is 8.1 is bigger than 2.11, okay. And as such, and as such, we reject h0 in favor in favor of h a at the ten percent at the sorry oh, in our case it's at the five percent significance level sig level I suppose we then infer we infer that we infer that the samples the samples have been drawn from populations from populations with different different population means population population means population means okay and we're 95 percent confident about that but we might be wrong but we'll only be wrong five percent of the time okay guys uh, once again this was Jonathan Lambert uh, with the mathematics development and support service at the National College of Ireland uh, and I hope this short video in relation to uh, how to conduct an independent samples t-test where we assume that the two samples have been drawn from populations with equal population variances I hope that this video helped to demystify what's going on under the hood uh, and once again thanks very much for your time